Hi, it's Mike. Welcome back to my train room for our fleet building or collecting series video number five. I'm here to talk about collecting resources and more importantly, ask what your favorite way to build your collection, your favorite source for buying and finding those items you really are have been hunting for or really wanting to add to your fleet. So the resources I use, and I've been on a collecting frenzy uh, the past 20 days as uh, winter time starts winding down. I tend to spend a little more time on camping, mountain bike riding, and uh, drag racing my car. Uh, and a little less time on buying a bunch of trains. Um, so past 20 days, uh, it's been quite the frenzy and excuse the mess because I just have stuff everywhere. Good thing I haven't expanded my layout yet or uh, there would not be enough room for all of this stuff as I've been unboxing it and running and testing and reviewing. Um, I've added quite a bit, right? But it's just because the collecting has been super rich. Um, there's been a lot of stuff available that I've been looking for. Then I also watched a lot of videos on stuff I didn't even know I really wanted until I saw it. So, um, you know, I would, I would like to hear from you guys around, you know, do you have like a local hobby shop uh, that maybe doesn't have online presence that's like one of your favorite places to buy? So my favorite resources are local hobby shops. Then number two would be friends, fellow club members. I'm the vice president of the St. Louis Lionel Club. So always good to know the history of something you're buying if you're buying used um, or other people in the hobby. Then number three, I love train shows. Train shows tend to be where I find the best deals and, you know, some of the rare items I'm looking for. And then a brand new inbox, online shops. And that jumps to number two. Uh, if I'm seeking something brand new that I forgot to order or didn't like uh, those army trains over there, I just didn't really think I wanted it. And then I saw them on someone else's review or someone else's layout and I'm like ooh that's pretty sweet I'm gonna go ahead and buy those so number five would be eBay not a bad source uh, they do tend to protect the buyer there are some uh, less than desirable experiences at times but eBay you know I rest assured typically that if I am buying on eBay and something doesn't go right they've got your back then online auctions or real live auctions uh, the drawback behind that, I find, is that uh, you, you just don't get the history around who owned, like, what's happened to that train before you bought it. And a lot of times the volume of items is so big, you know, it's not all gone through and tested. Um, I do find some rare items that way and some decent deals occasionally, but, um, you know... If I can get it at one of the other sources, I'm cool with that. And then last would be Facebook Marketplace. I haven't bought much off of there. Uh, and I really haven't sold a whole lot on there either. Um, when I'm trying to get rid of something I maybe don't want anymore, I tend to use the train shows for reselling some of my collection. And I have a partnership with a local hobby shop that if there is something that I just really uh, want to sell to buy something new, uh, I'll just tell them how much they want and then they mark it up. I, I leave room for them to make some money off of it and then, you know, they flip it for me and give me credit towards something else in the store. So, let me hear your ways of buying stuff. And also, if you have those rare uh, hobby shops out there with a big back stock with no online presence, because, for example, how do I find, I've been on a Lionel Legacy Hudson uh, collecting spree from like 2019, and I've found four of the steamers so far, and I'm looking for 5405 now, cab 5405. I have four of the other cabs, and now I can't find 5405. 
So if one of you know where a 5405 is, for in, for example, you know, maybe I can call that shop and buy it from them. Then also another good example would be, you know, there's four of these Frisco USRA box cars out there. Uh, I have 6489-2 and 6489-4. You might know where number one and number three are and could give me a, a uh, advice on that where to get them so you know i would like to build a collecting network or you know more of a treasure hunting type network so that we can help one another find the rare cars we're looking for and also advise on some pricing so um you know like what's a great deal for that proto 2 veranda and you know if you're looking for that i know there were several of them are for sale right now at a really good price because people bought the lionel and they're like well i went to lionel i can't afford to keep both so they're selling some of their mths which the detail on that is freaking amazing with the metal side vents the propane die cast tender i love that engine um so just food for thought and something to think about is you know we're all in this hobby together and we all have our favorite resources. So what's your favorite resource? And, you know, do you have a couple hobby shops in your area that might have some serious backstock on some brand new inbox merchandise that, uh, you know, we can't find at the big box retailers online anymore because they're sold out or at our local hobby shop because maybe... Um, your hobby shop has different road numbers than what are in different uh, railroads than what mine would carry because mine typically appeals more to the St. Louis railroads where someone in New York might have more uh, of the New York Central out there and maybe Jersey Central. So if that's something I was interested in, you would be able to find it for me. So let me know and your what your thoughts are and uh we'll figure out how to move forward in this this i guess uh networking around finding things that we're really looking for and what the good deals on them would be so thanks for checking out my video and i'll talk to you next time